Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my kitchen. It is uh, lunchtime-ish. I just finished up. I roasted a chicken today. Uh, Maya and I just had it for lunch and I packaged up what was left to go in the fridge for later. And I'm about to take what's left of this carcass. I have a bag that I have in the fridge, at the freezer. And whenever I've got parts like that, but it's not really enough to make a good broth, I just put it in the freezer. And then eventually when it gets to be enough, I'll take all of that and make broth. We are butchering chickens this week, so we're going to have plenty to make broth and I'll probably throw it in with that. So I'm in the kitchen today. I don't have a lot of great things to show, but I figured I would pop in and chat with you guys for a moment um, because I have several things that I'm like, oh, this is cool. For one, Will brought me some prickly pear juice. Uh, he has some prickly pear cacti growing on his property and he harvested, I think the fruits are called tunas. I know the juice they call tuna. Anyway, he harvested um, and got three gallons, and so he brought me a quart. I'm drinking some of it, but I'm thinking I may make a small batch of jelly. Several people mentioned that when I showed that I had some prickly pear cacti in my greenhouse. Um, but Will and I were just talking about where to put those. We haven't planted them out, but I took one sip of this juice, and I'm like, oh man. We gotta do that, because this is delicious. Another interesting news. Uh, this is actually what I'm going to be doing today and I am going to work on a blog post to be able to share this recipe with you guys. I was kind of experimenting um, because when I looked it up I found a few good recipes online but they were all varied a little bit and I went off of the recipe on the pectin package um, and I ended up coming up with what I think I like. Um, I'm making wine jellies. So this one's red wine jelly and this one is blueberry muscadine wine jelly and today I, I went and got a bottle of white wine from the store that I was going to try to make a jelly out of that. So I'm doing these little jars because I am making my preparations for Christmas. Um, it's October now, late October at this point and I like to do homemade Christmas gifts. It is not always necessarily more economical because for instance, like with these, you have to buy the jars, you have to, like with this, I got wine, buy pectin and sugar. It, I mean, I think it's better. Even though it is not necessarily a super cheap way to give gifts, it could be a cheaper way to give gifts rather than, you know, buying a basket from Harry and David or whatever. Um, obviously, it's a lot cheaper than that. But it, I think it's very much more meaningful. So I'm gonna be doing some jars of peppers, uh, probably like cowboy candy. I've got a whole bunch of peppers that I, I need to use. So that would be something that I can do. And then wine jellies. And then I figured I could bake loaves of bread and then some sort of sweets like cookies or something like that and put together that with some dried herbs and put together some nice baskets for some of our friends and family members that we want to be able to give gifts to for Christmas. And since I was having a kitchen day, I actually pulled something off my shelf that I thought was really cool. I just wanted to share it with you guys because I think you could appreciate it. Years ago, I went into a bookstore in Arkansas that I love. It's called Dixon Street Bookshop. It's in Fayetteville. Uh, one, one weekend, I was visiting my brother whenever he still lived there. And we went in there, and there are so many great old books. And I ended up grabbing this copy of It's the Joy of Cooking, which is a very popular and, I mean, it's been popular for a long time cookbook. Uh, Irma Rombauer. This particular version, this copy, was uh, printed in 1946, but it, the original one was 1931. I love finding old cookbooks because, especially if they're like from the 30s originally, it's kind of pre processed food. So, while some of the language, like some of the ingredients that they call for, might not be super readily available, or super popular to still use, you're not gonna see a whole bunch of processed ingredients. And so when you're trying to cook whole foods and real foods, an old cookbook like this can be really valuable. Now this particular cookbook, the reason I bought it when I did, and I've had this on my shelf for probably seven or eight years, uh, is because I opened it up and realized that there were lots of notes and letters in it. And I just pulled it off the shelf 
I don't know, a couple days ago and I've had it here in my kitchen. So when I'm like waiting for something to cook or drinking my coffee in the morning, I just am sitting down and thumbing through it. And it's been really, really enjoyable. So the lady who owned this book, her name was Helen. I don't know anything else. I've just, I've just there are multiple notes to her that other people have written. Like this one that her friend wrote her about, um, apparently Helen had had a surgery of some sort and so her friend was giving her some different advice of things that she could make ahead um, to have meals or maybe she was going to have the surgery I don't know what kind but like she was talking about cooking multiple baked potatoes and then mixing ricotta cheese with some seasoning uh, to put on the potatoes, but anyway, it's just been really cool. But I found this one little recipe in here that I thought was so fun, uh, where the the cookbook author were talking about crepes Suzette and the famous French American cook Henri. She, she's talking about the this cook making this food for Prince Albert, talking about how he so loved these crepes, but he made them, crepe Suzette were just an accident. And it's just fun, I don't know, looking through this has been really enjoyable and given me some inspiration. And so if you happen to be in an old bookstore or in a thrift store, thrift stores you will find, occasionally you can find some, an old bookstore is really where it's at for stuff like this. Um, I find old cookbooks in thrift stores all the time but not this old like being able to find a ladies cookbook from like the 30s or 40s that has notes and handwritten recipes and notes in the margins for me is such a treasure because i don't know it's just like having having this little this this lady over your shoulder and uh kind of seeing her opinion about things i don't you know, I'll never be able to nail down who this, this Helen was, but I kind of feel like I know her from having had her cookbook. Maybe that's just me being romantic, but sometimes I am. All right, so I do not have instructions on what I'm doing because I'm kind of winging it. This is the prickly pear juice. It's the rest of what I have. I had a quart. I drank a little bit of it. Um, so I had a little over like about three and a half cups. And for the way that I usually do jelly, um, which by the way, jelly has a ton of sugar in it. That's what this, that's what this is going to have. This is going to have a ton of sugar in it. I usually do four cups of juice of whatever kind of juice. And then I heat that with the proper amount of pectin, which is a package or whatever it is. Um, if you use like bulk pectin, it'll tell you how much to use. And then I heat that. And when it comes to a boil, I add the sugar, which is four and a half cups of sugar, and then bring that to a boil, boil it for a minute, and then put it in the jars and water bath can it for about 10 minutes. And so I had just enough prickly pear juice to do that with the lemon juice in this. So we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm sort of winging it on this. I've never made uh, jelly out of this, but look how brilliantly pink it is. It should be really cool. Like you can kind of see here. It should be really cool looking jelly if it turns out. If it doesn't, it'll just be a very sugary syrupy sauce. As usual, my math was way off. I'm gonna make three more jars. I need to go get a few more jars cleaned and ready <laughs> to bottle up. One of the reasons why y'all are always like, hey, just recipe book. <laughs> I don't measure anything because I'm not good at math, okay? <laughs> All right, I'll be back. All right, I've got these jars in the canner. I ended up having a little bit extra and put it in here. Um, that one's not gonna fit in this batch in the canner. I'm just gonna stick it in the fridge because we'll use it. I'll probably send a couple of these with Will since he brought me the juice and we'll see how it is. It'll probably take 24 hours or so for them to really set up. Um, if you're using this liquid pectin, which is what I currently have, um, a lot of times I'll have bulk pectin, but I ran out. I put another uh, bag on my Azure order, but it won't be here till next month. 
So I just grabbed some liquid pectin from the store because I was working on this Christmas gift stuff. And uh, this stuff can take like up to a day to set up. I made one of those wine jellies. One set up immediately, the other one didn't. And I thought, man, I don't know what happened. And then the next day they were both set. So I'm gonna let these sit on the counter for at least a day before I start shaking them or anything like that. When I'm water bathing multiple batches in a day, I always just cover the water bath canner and turn it off if I need to pause for a second. That way it kind of retains some heat without having it on. Um, I'll turn it back up when I need to heat it back up. But these guys look good. Hopefully soon we'll start hearing some popping and hopefully tomorrow morning they'll all be fully set. I've just finished, um, oh here it is. I've just finished pouring the white wine jelly into these jars. I decided to go ahead and do these eight ounce jars for this. I've got a whole bunch of those little ones and I'll probably make more of those, but I need to actually make a list and who all I'm giving this stuff to, because I was just making it. Figured I'd figure that out later. But these all seem to be doing okay. I usually take a little bit of jelly when I'm making it, put it on a cold plate just to see that it's setting. And it looks like this is gonna set just fine. But I'm gonna process it for 10 minutes now. I've got eight jars. I'm actually not a huge wine drinker. Um, it just gives me a headache and I, I'm not a fan. However, <laughs> I put a bunch of sugar in it, it tastes really good. Um, I think that this is gonna make really nice gifts though and it's something that people can't just go readily buy at the store. When I do homemade gifts, I like to do things like this and cowboy candy and things that are homemade but not easy to necessarily get outside of getting it in a gift from someone who knows how to make it. Uh, with the wine jelly, so with that whole four cups of juice, four and a half cups of sugar, one pack of pectin, um, a bottle of wine is three and a half cups. So I just do the three and a half cups plus a half a cup of lemon juice. So it, it's actually worked out to be almost the exact same measurements I used in the prickly pear jelly, which that's still quite hot. Um, so it's very liquidy. but. Uh, I, I don't know how the white wine one's gonna be. So I figured out how to make this because I visited a farm to table restaurant in Arkansas once and they had red wine jelly and I thought that it was really neat and a good idea. Uh, so I started playing around figuring it out. But the white wine jelly I've never, I've never had. So we'll see. I'm, I'm curious how the white wine flavor is gonna do with the lemon juice, but I don't know. I'm just experimenting and hopefully it turns out good. I did admittedly buy very cheap wine for this. I mean, it was like less than $10 a bottle at Costco simply because I wasn't sure that it was gonna turn out. I wasn't sure that it was gonna set up and I'm adding a bunch of sugar to it. So I can't, I, I'm sure that somebody out there who's an expert in these things would think that it matters, but in the case of this, I didn't really feel like it mattered that much how good the wine was. So this is what I'm doing today. I'm probably gonna bake some bread and get some things made for school lunches. But on days like this, it's actually very nice outside. I figure I'll get out in the garden uh, some this afternoon. It was really chilly this morning and I needed to get caught up on the lunch stuff. So I went ahead and started these things since I was planning on being in the kitchen. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Uh, I bless you until next time.